Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Eco Tango Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 1 november 2015. Dus het bulletin van zondag. We hebben vandaag dezelfde data als gisteren, maar dan 10 hertz lager op 340 hertz. Contestia dus. 125 bandbreedte, twee tonen, synchronisatie marge 8, integratie van FEC 4, inclusief XMT start- en stoptonen. De rest van de uitzending is in het Engels vandaag. Today's bulletin is in English. We have several topics for you from all around the world. And today's data is almost the same as yesterday, only it's centered around 340 Hz this time, so 10 Hz below yesterday's value. Contestia it is. Contestia, 125 bandwidth, two tones, 125 bandwidth, two tones, synchronization margin 8, synchronization margin 8, integration of FEC 4, including start stop tones, and it's on 340 Hz. Amateur Radio Newsline Report number 1983 with a release date of Friday, October 30th, 2015. If you speak Afrikaans, the South African Radio League would like to have a word or two with you. Actually, the league would like to have a few hundred words or more with you. There's a project underway to compile an Afrikaans dictionary for those radio amateurs who speak the language, and volunteers are needed to provide expertise and help to compile it. Anyone wanting to help put the project together should email Etienne Nada, ZS6EFN at Etienne at AfriGrid.com. I'll spell that for you. E-T-I-E-N-N-E at A-F-R-I-G-R-I-D dot com. Australia's National Fun Flight Day, being held Sunday, November 8th, reaches out to disadvantaged kids by giving them wings to fly. Pilots and flying clubs provide free flights and access to the planes for youngsters at the event. The Bendigo Amateur Radio and Electronics Club will also be putting kids on the air using radios instead of airplanes. They're setting up an amateur radio station at the Bendigo Flying Club and tuning into 40 meters. Other radio clubs will be connecting with the Fun Flight Station and the kids. If you'd like more information on Fun Flight, go to www.funflight.org. It's not surprising that Larry Lambert, N0LL, and Lance Collister, W7GJ, might just believe in magic. The two are the latest to qualify for the ARRL's Fred Fish Memorial Award, an honor conferred on amateurs who work and confirm all 488 Maidenhead grid squares in the 48 contiguous states, working them all on six meters. The award is named for the late Fred Fish, W5FF, one of Fish's accomplishments before becoming a silent key in April of 2010 was to make and confirm those 488 contacts himself. Collister and Lambert are the first since 2011 to receive the 6-meter achievement award for duplicating the noted VHF operator's efforts on the so-called magic band. In the UK, Ofcom has announced plans to auction part of the radio spectrum formerly used for ham radio. Their hope is that part of the band could be utilized by ever-growing high-speed mobile broadband services. The auction won't happen until early 2016 and includes a total of 190 megahertz of high-capacity spectrum on 2.3 and 3.4 gigahertz. As spooky as the celebration can get sometimes, hundreds of hams in New York are working with state troopers to make sure this late October holiday doesn't turn into a real horror show. The hams, along with citizens, band radio operators, are volunteers in a public service project known as the Pumpkin Patrol. On the evenings of Friday, October 30th and Saturday, October 31st, they'll hit the road to make sure the pumpkins don't. Dispatching hams and citizens band operators in their personal vehicles, the patrol and communications network, overseen by the state police, hopes to ensure that pumpkins don't have a ghost of a chance of being tossed from any overpasses along the 570-mile-long New York State Thruway. Members of the Liverpool Amateur Radio Club, the Madison Oneida Amateur Radio Club, and the Rochester Amateur Radio Association are among those providing volunteers. In fact, almost every county through New York State has had hams involved. The effort began in 1976 with a Montgomery County, New York woman who was talking on her citizens' band radio with a truck driver as a tossed pumpkin shattered his window, injuring him. The state police have been overseeing the effort since 1990. Hopefully, the only thing smashing on Halloween evening and night will be this effort success, which only goes to prove that when you find hams on the air, you won't find pumpkins in the air. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. Milestones in Japan. Raw Japan celebrated a significant milestone on the 8th of October 2015 on 7.075 MHz. It was their 11,000th morning call. 
The local conditions were not good that day because of a typhoon, but several stations worked the key station and the milestone was achieved. The morning call is held every morning on 7.075 MHz, except Sunday and national holidays, from 0.730 to 0.815 local time. And this has been continuous for 37 years. And for the rest of us, it's never too late to start. Rewind. What's new in radio communications? Well, instead of what's new, let's rewind. Radio communications backhaul takes you on a trip down memory lane. As today, we look at what's happening in the critical communications field, but 25 years ago. The cover of the October-November 1990 issue of What's New in Radio Communications featured the Philips PRM80 series of mobile radios, which had been awarded an Australian Design Award and also became the first Australian product to receive one of West Germany's Goot Industry Form Awards. The very successful unit sold all around Australia and across the globe. Elsewhere in the magazine, L.W. Edwards of Moonraker Australia brought us up to date on marine mobile HF radio antenna design and they presented a case study on the communication system used by Yellow Cabs in Brisbane. It's also interesting to be reminded of company names that no longer exist. OSAT, OTC and Marconi, now part of BAE, to name just a few. Sound of radio, no change. 